Greetings, I'm Dr. Han Sik. Today I'm going to talk about how guided surgery changes bone graft and soft tissue graft. The contents of today. First, I'm going to talk about guided implant surgery using top-down principles. Second, I'm going to talk about how guided surgery changes bone graft. Third, I'm also going to talk about how soft tissue graft changes with guided surgery. And then I'm going to conclude my lecture. This is the first topic. Guided implant surgery using top-down principle. The reason why we place the implant is to provide prosthesis which has appropriate form and function. That is why we place the implant and therefore top-down principle is very important. Implants need to be placed in number 26 and 27. The most important in this case is to align teeth reflecting final crown prosthesis. You need to determine the size of the teeth and position the implant. That is very important in the designing process. As shown, you need to accurately set the form of buccolingual and mesolingual area. Look at the lateral view and check whether the central axis of the crown is in balance with adjacent teeth or the antagonist. Another important point if you look from behind, you need to check whether the overjet or overbite with antagonist is similar to that of existing natural dentition. If you do a rough job here, implant will be malpositioned. Even if you use a guide, it will be of no help in determining the form of final prosthesis. As shown, you place the crown similar to that of the final crown and then determine the implant placement position. If you make a guide like this, you'd be able to design implant crown without major obstacles. Second, I'm going to talk about how bone graft changes with guided surgery. This is a case where implant was placed a long time ago. In lower left molar area, there's a lot of bone destruction. In the past, you would do extraction and wait for soft tissue healing. There is a significant bone destruction. Placing implant appropriately would be difficult in this case, so I wait for soft tissue healing. And then I open flap, check the defect. Trafine drill is used to get autogenous bone. Allogenic bone graft is also used for bone graft. After that, in order to maximize bone graft effect, the collagen membrane is also used. Suture is done using nylon. And four months passes, I wait for healing, and then I open flap using the traditional method. I placed two implants using SS2 and SS3. In the case of SS implant with one stage concept, after you place the implant, there is soft tissue gap in between implants. Therefore, you need to get soft tissue with an oral cavity and position it between implants in order to prevent soft tissue gap from forming between implants. You can prevent surgical site opening despite suture using this method. After three months, stock abutment was used and as shown, gold crown was used for prosthesis. This kind of crown is hardly used these days. In the past, the bone graft was done, an implant was placed, a separate soft tissue surgery was done to restore final prosthesis in this way. Then what changes with guided surgery? 
This is the second case. Implant was placed first in the lower. If you look at the antagonist in the upper, the tooth has come down quite significantly. And you can see that buccally, there is a significant atrophy. Buccal plate is completely missing. From the first, I talked about taking out the upper tooth and placing implant, but the patient refused. When the time came to deliver prosthesis for the lower, I thought that I would not be able to provide appropriate prosthesis in the lower if the crown in the upper was left alone, and therefore I persuaded the patient. First and second molar in the upper left were extracted, and this is after extraction, buccal plate is completely lost. As shown, granulation tissue has been thoroughly removed. Bone graft was not done, and after four months of healing period, you can see that soft tissue has healed. Look at how upper left second molar's buccal plate is significantly resorbed. In the past, in this case, implant would be placed and bone graft would have been done or bone graft would have been done first and then implant would have been placed. However, these days we don't do it like that anymore and I'm going to show you what has changed. Using guide program, implant placement position is determined using top-down principle. As shown, if you look at the bone quality number 26, it has normal bone width and height. However, in tw number 27, buccal bone is not fully healed. Guide is used, a soft tissue is removed, and implant has been placed. Healing abutment was connected to the mesial implant, to the distal implant. The flap was reflected once again. On the buccal defect, the bone graft is done. In this case, if I had not used a guide and used traditional method in placing implant, implant would have been placed more palatally. There would have been such tendency because you feel the urge to use more residual bone and to avoid the dehiscence or fenestration on the buccal side. Therefore, implant may have been placed more buccally. However, in this case, guide was used and implant was placed in ideal position, flap was reflected, and bone graft was done. Suture was done. This is the final implant image. After three months of healing, you can see that there's peri-implant mucosa healing. Scan body is connected and oral scan is taken. As shown, a program dental system is used to fabricate customized abutment and implant crown at the same time and customized abutment is connected. And this is how the final crown has been adapted. Appropriate form and size. It has a good anatomical form. This is the relation with the antagonist. Normal overjet and overbite was restored. This is before extraction and this is after completing implant crown. You can see that the situation has improved dramatically. Third, I'm going to talk about how soft tissue management changes with guided surgery. This was implant surgery done quite a while ago. Flap was reflected in a traditional way and implants, three of them, were placed. After three months, a secondary surgery was done. Healing abutments were to be connected. As shown, this is the line of mucogingival junction. The position of the implant is beyond mucogingival junction. Therefore, through second stage surgery, healing abutment was first connected and bed was created. As shown, free gingival graft was done.
Finally, stock abutment was used. Number 35, PFM crown was used. Number 36 and 37, metal occlusion prosthesis were used. As you can see around the crown, keratinized tissue has been formed. This is the completed image. This is a different case. Traditional way was used to reflect the flap and three implants were placed. In the case of number 37, primary stability was not good and it was submerged. After three months, a second surgery was done. As shown, number 35 and 36, it is within the scope of keratinized tissue. However, number 37, it is completely beyond mucogingival junction. And this was anticipated ahead. Healing abutment was connected, bed was formed, and free gingival graft was done to create keratinized mucosa. Zirconia crown was used for final prosthesis, and you can see keratinized tissue around the prosthesis. In these cases, when we use guide, what changes in terms of soft tissue management? This is a case where implants failed repeatedly. As you can see, mucogingival junction is almost beyond the top of alveolar bone. Implant position, I anticipate it's going to be like this if I place implants here because there's no keratinized tissue, it's going to be very difficult to maintain. In this case, if you use guide, you punch out the soft tissue. You can see that soft tissue is very thin. If you open flap and place alveolar crestal level implant, then there can be issues related to biologic width. It is much more favorable to use a guide to place the implant. In the desired position, implants were placed using the guide and healing abutments were connected and bed was formed. Soft tissue was grafted from the maxilla in the desired form. Graft was done like this. Soft tissue graft is now complete. You can see that there's keratinized tissue around the abutment. After scanning, the final crown and customized abutments were designed. Customized abutment and crown were fabricated. Abutment is connected and final crown was delivered. I would like to move on to conclusion. When you use guided surgery, you can use top-down principle. Place the implant following the ideal crown position. You can place the implant in an ideal position as well. Second, you can do bone graft and soft tissue management at the same time as you place the implant. Third, you can significantly reduce the number of patient visits to the clinic. And fourth, the overall treatment period can be reduced as well. Finally, you can also reduce patient pain significantly. This is the end of my presentation and I'm going to address your questions via the Q&A session. What is the criteria that you use for doing guided surgery and bone graft at the same time or doing guided surgery or bone graft consecutively? First of all, if there's a bone defect, when you use guide for implant placement, to determine whether it is possible to place implant in such a state, you need to look at primary stability. If you can not get primary stability, 
using guide, then in that case you need to do bone graft first and wait sufficiently. After that you can use guide for implant placement. That would be most ideal. However, if bone defect form allows for sufficient primary stability when implant is placed, then I think you can do implant placement together with bone graft. That would be a good option as well. Second question, when do you perform free gingival graft for patient who is going to have guided surgery? If the bone condition is very good, bone height, bone width is good, you can do free gingival graft as you place the implant and that will be the best protocol. However, if the bone condition underneath is very narrow or poor, rather than doing it together, I believe you need to make a keratinized tissue with free gingival graft first and then do guided surgery. or. You can do soft tissue graft and then do guided surgery. How did you like the past three lectures on digital guided surgery? I hope this was of help to your treatment. Next time, I'm going to talk about implant prosthesis design using custom abutment. Thank you for watching.